how to create an offer that flies off the shelves on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Digit. Save money without thinking about it. Get paid $5 just for signing up at servenomaster.com backslash digit today. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. When I was younger, in high school and in college and a little bit later, one of my favorite things to watch on television was infomercials. It's amazing and it's so powerful. Infomercials spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on each test and they are constantly refining every aspect of their process. If you want to really get good at sales and really understand the structure of sales, start watching infomercials. I've never purchased something from an infomercial and I probably never will. I certainly can't anymore with where I live now, but I've always been fascinated with how they work. Now saying that I have purchased something um, that I saw in an infomercial later on. I purchased one of those Fushigi juggling balls. Horrible. Totally got me. But I bought it at like a gas station or something like that. Or maybe it was a CVS, like a pharmacy store. So I didn't buy it directly from the television. That is the one thing that uh, it did work on me because it looks so exciting. But the structure of infomercials is it's really an art form. And if you can get beyond your emotional and visceral reactions and focus on the structure, you can begin to really understand certain elements that really, really work on everyone. An infomercial will test dozens of variations of their commercial and their format to see which variations work the best. There's a ton of science that goes into every episode. And there's a great uh, TV show that only had two seasons called Pitch Men, where they followed Billy Mays and one of his partners before Billy Mays died. So he's only there for season one. But the structure of an infomercial is fascinating. How they choose a product, how they test to see if a product's worth doing, all of that is very, very structured. There's no guesswork. See, to test an offer online, you can spend anywhere from $500 to $1,000. To test an infomercial, you're going to spend fifty dollars to $100,000. That's a huge investment just for a test. So their pre-testing regimen, their pre-testing process is critical to get everything right. And even once an infomercial does okay, they'll constantly change the order of things and all of that different structure. So I really recommend watching infomercials to see how they structure their offers, their promises, the pricing and everything. Every different piece of the infomercial, everything they say, all the different phrasing, it's very powerful and it's very, very strategic. And this is why if you start watching infomercials, you'll notice that they're similar. And you'll also notice that there are usually two infomercials selling the same type of thing. There will be two fitness infomercials running around the same time or two vacuum infomercials. Or for a while, there were two infomercials selling a special type of ladies bra that I could not tell the difference between what the two infomercials were selling. All of these things become powerful juggernauts. And the two main infomercial companies, when one has one, the other one tries to make something similar. Competing with each other. And when they see something that's working, they go, oh, we should make something just like that. It's working. It's the same thing that movies do, don't they? Whenever there's a movie about a natural disaster, if there's one about an earthquake, another company will make one about earthquake. There's two about an earthquake. There's two about asteroid strikes. There's two about bugs and ants one year. Whenever there's a big new idea for a movie, suddenly there's two movies of a similar vein that come out in the same year. This is because when people see an idea they think is good, they copy it. So as much as movies do it, so in infomercials. Now, when you're creating your offer, if you watch a couple of infomercials, all this will make sense. The first thing is you need to understand the difference between a book and a product. A product is an offer. It's something that we sell that's so much more. I write books all the time. A book is something you sell on Amazon. People buy the book. It's one thing. They go and they buy it in the store. They buy it off the shelf. It's a single item. But when you're in the direct response market where it's you and the customer and you're convincing the customer to make a purchase from your website, from your infomercial, from your YouTube video, when it's a one-to-one -one conversation, we want to craft something that's beyond that. We want to craft an offer that's a whole package. 
rather than buying a book, people are buying a solution or buying a system. And that means including all the other things that they need. This is why when you buy a workout program from an infomercial or from a website, it includes the stuff you need, like the stretchy bands or the whatever. But when you buy a book, it never includes that stuff. When you buy a DVD, it doesn't include that stuff. So if you look and you buy a series of exercise DVDs and they come with one stretchy rubber band, those will cost $100 instead of costing $20. We have a greater perceived value for packages. When we see a package, we see a bunch of stuff together, we see the whole kit, we pay a lot more for that convenience. Now, buying one of those stretchy bands, I bought them before, they're like 5 or $7. And then the DVDs would be 20 So if you bought them separately, it would be $25. But together, it's 100 That's just the way it is, and that's how we purchase things. When you're crafting your offer, when you're making your first product, the goal of the main product is to solve a problem. Right now, I'm working on a new project with someone, and he came to me with a project about uh, teaching people how to code, how to learn Ruby on Rails and CSS and some really complicated coding because when you learn the coding, which only takes about eight to 12 weeks, you can then get a high six, seven figure job immediately. Right now, there's a huge industry for coding camps, which is where people go and live there. They pay about 10 or $12,000 and they spend two months learning enough coding to get a job. And right now, almost every single person who completes a coding camp program ends up hired. There's that much work. There's that much work out there. The internet's growing, technological jobs are growing. There's tons and tons of work for people that are good coders. And I can tell you that's absolutely true. I'm constantly looking for tons of new coders in the independent market as well. So if you want to work for yourself or you want to work for a company, you could do really well as a coder. That's the opportunity. Now, that doesn't really solve a problem. So beginning to work on the project with the client, with this particular project, we started looking at, especially me, I started looking at how can we make this solving a problem? And how can we turn this into something that's really big? If we just are solving the problem, if, if you want to code, here's how to, that's too small of a market. No, there's not that many people. Is our target audience people that want to go to the $10,000 coder bootcamp and can't afford it? That's a small audience. That's a book audience. We don't want that. We want bigger. So what we really have been working on is creating, well, how can you create an entire business? How can you create wealth as a coder? And then when it becomes fixing the problem of making enough money, then it becomes fixing a real problem or creating a real solution. It becomes the idea of a business in a box or business opportunity, which is a much bigger market, about a thousand to a million times bigger. So being in the biz op space, what people like to purchase in that space, it's similar to the infomercial space. People really like to buy a thing called binary right now, which is, it's a gambling system, except for it's for stock market. And they call it binary because they send you yes, no questions. So you either buy the stock or don't, or the stock is up or the stock is not. They use one, two questions. There's always new systems for stock market business and same things for Forex. And the thing with all those systems, and the reason I've never gotten involved in that is that none of them work. Okay, if I had a perfect system for the stock market and every time I invested money, I doubled my money, why would I make a product about it when I could be a billionaire? It's the same thing for gambling systems. My friend once purchased a gambling system. We found it online, actually. He found it online from an affiliate. And the gambling system is very simple. You bet on roulette. On roulette, there are bets that are 50-50. So you can bet on red, and either it lands on red or it lands on black, 50-50. And every time you do that, you bet on red a dollar. If you win, great, you've won a dollar. If you lose, you bet on red again, two dollars. And then you bet four dollars. So you double your bet each time so that you make back your investment and win. And mathematically, the system is strong, except for there's two reasons that it doesn't work. And my friend lost about $10,000 in two weeks because he totally believed in the system. It works the first time you try it, it always will. So if you go to Vegas and try it, you'll win about 100 bucks. But if you keep trying to do it, you'll end up losing thousands, so please don't. But he had this system and the system seemed perfect and he would then be betting, it would keep doubling and he'd suddenly he'd be betting like $1,024 in the hopes of winning one. You're trying to recover that $1 by constantly doubling your bet. And then he discovered that every casino has a bet cap. So when you're doubling your bet to win back your money, eventually you're not allowed to bet that high and you get kicked in the pants. The second thing to remember is that there's green on that circle too. So it's not 50-50 at all. It's more like 49-49. Now that extra one, that extra green circle, the double zero, it doesn't seem like it matters, but it does because it means that in a perfect world, if the math is absolutely perfect and you're always going back and forth, sometimes it'll hit the green, which throws off your numbers, which means you'll always be almost at break even, almost at that 50-50 to earn your money back, but you won't quite hit it. 
that green actually ensures that the system doesn't work. It's really complicated math, but it's, it's the other reason, even without caps, why the system doesn't work. And you really want to bet a million dollars to make one. So the, the promotion for that was the guy was a casino affiliate. So he was like, try these casinos. It works there. I made tons of money. And my friend totally fell for it. And I said, this seems suspicious to me. This was a long time ago, more than 10 years ago. But I, even at the time, I was like, this seems really, really suspicious. But when people see a system, they get really excited. So circling back, the system that I'm working on with this coding program, I said, let's simplify it. What if we can build a system where people can start their own business so they're getting paid while they learn, which you know I'm a big fan of, make their first $100 client within the first two weeks, make $100 to pay back any investment in this course, and then they can use the training to slowly accelerate and make money as a freelancer while they learn to code, and then they can switch to either running their own large coding business or they can transition into working for somewhere else. So in either case, we change it from learn how to code, which not a lot of people want to do. I look, it's pretty hard. If you have the ability to sit down and really focus, you can learn it and it's a really high income business. Make a lot of money if you can learn to do it. But not everyone has the ability to sit down and really focus, but we can start off teaching people how to program websites. And you already know, I've taught you already throughout my course and with the blog blueprint as well, if you need more, how to set up a WordPress blog. Now there are people that will pay you $100 all day long to set up a WordPress blog for them. All day long, you can find clients doing that. So we start off at that level. Let's build a basic website, be able to build a basic website for someone, earn $100, pay back the cost of the course. And that way you can decide if you like it and immediately you're covered. So this is the beginning of an offer. The first thing is finding the problem to solve. And we actually went through several iterations to get to this point. Once we begin to understand the purpose of the offer and the things we wanted to teach, we begin adding in other parts to the main course. So now we'll teach the correct mindset, how to find clients, how to learn over time, all those other pieces. Instead of it just being a training manual, we begin adding in the other pieces to make it a business in a box or a system. And in fact, we'll probably change the website and name because learn how to be a coder is not matching our new messaging. Coding is now simply the mechanism for building your own business. And it's actually, a, it went from a, a product I wasn't excited about to something I'm really excited about because it's something that you really can use to build your own business and be future-proof because coding is going to be strong for a very long time. And the particular system this guy loves is very strong and will be strong for a very long time. And once you learn one system, learning a second one is very easy. And constantly, there are more and more jobs opening up in this market. Anyone I know who's really good at coding always finds work. They know how to find work. How many apps come out all the time? There's always work for app developers, always work for coders. So it's a great markets to be able to do. And they're not shrinking, they're massively growing. There's always more jobs and there are people looking for them right now. So it's a really cool market. And I wanted to design something where people, if they grab it, they don't like it and they realize, oh, I don't want to do this. They can still make back the cost of their investment by just taking on one project and really seeing it, taking on a small project. So once you go beyond your main offer, which is solving a problem, and that's always the thing. And your problem, if it's in fitness, you can be solving a problem to say, how to be skinny in time for your wedding day, how to drop a dress size before your wedding day. That's fix a specific problem. And that specific problem is actually a huge part of the fitness industry. That's a specific one. People always want to lose weight before their weddings. Everyone wants to look good in wedding photos. Or you can really target and fix how to recover from a sports injury. And I know someone that's their whole expertise and they have about seven products that cover an injury to your neck, an injury to your back, an injury to your elbow, an injury. And actually they have a really good rehab program. It helps people recover strength when they're injured in different parts of their body. So they're fixing a specific problem and the size of your problem just determines the size of your market. So even though that guy is fixing a cool problem, he's only fixing a problem for people that have hurt elbow. Anyone that's never hurt elbow will never buy one of his products. So that determines the width of his market. Sometimes people try to release something that's too wide, and sometimes it's so lasered down, only one person in the world wants it. So there is a bit of art to finding that balance. Once you solve the problem, you need to add in bonuses or increase the value of your offer. The way you design bonuses and Let's brainstorm this a little bit together. I haven't actually started designing the bonuses for this program, but let me tell you my process. I'm working on this how to be a coder project. Okay. And now it's kind of a business in a box. Learn how to support yourself, make money, support your family. It's very similar to the pattern that I teach here, which is to do it through freelance writing. The difference is that when you coding is harder to learn, but the profit arc is way higher. The growth financially is way larger. If you can really learn how to code, and get really good at it fast, you can make a lot more money, but it's a lot harder to learn. That's the payoff, and that's why you get paid more, right? It's harder to learn. 
So it's similar arc to what I teach here, but a lot of what I teach here is about freelance writing. And it's part of this new Earn 1K a month program I'm working on that I'm going to make a free program as part of the vlog. That's something I'm working on right now that I'm writing. So that's our main thing. We want to think about bonuses and a bonus to an offer is something that improves the value of the offer, is worth more than the offer, or overcomes an objection. And I tend to focus on overcoming an objection. So when I say we're looking for something with coding, right? We're saying our main product is how to solve the problem of to, how to make money when you're out of work or how to get a higher paying job, how to end, get back into the workforce. You've been out of workforce too long. So part of um, what I'm always thinking about is an offer that is good for job seekers. So it's a way for people to add a new skill. And one of the things I was looking at is, does having this skill help you get back to work in other sectors? Unfortunately, it doesn't. I would love if it did. I would love if it could help you get back to work as a, a feather in your cap, but it doesn't work that way. And that's something that we learned through a little research. But it does allow you to approach other markets and it does allow you to make money while you're in between jobs. So there's value there. So then we want to think about what are some of the main objections people would have? And the first, of course, is that coding is super hard. That's objection number one. So we need to create a bonus. And this is just me brainstorming with you right now because I haven't done this yet with my partner client on this project. But the first objection is going to be the coding is hard. And this is why the main offer is really about the structure building a business in the box and then giving them a very simple program, a very simple way to learn the basics and get, make money along the way. Because when you're making money while you're learning, learning is a lot easier. Imagine if you went to school and you got paid every day. Of course, you would put in more effort. Or if you got paid for your grades. Some parents do that and there's a reason they do it. It works. These systems, they're a way to motivate human psychology. So... Our first objection is coding is hard. And maybe our second objection is I'm not any good at sales or I'm not very good with computers. And we're looking for to find things that we can easily overcome. And we're trying to find what the largest part of the market is. And what a lot of businesses will do is offer 13 or 14 bonuses, but they'll show different ones all the time and they'll test it. It's the first thing they'll test and they'll see which bonuses create the most sales. And then they'll make the bonuses later on. They make them once they see what people want. So it's actually something you can very much test. And some very big marketers I know do that. That's one approach. If you have a budget for testing and you can do those things, of course you can. But I always start off with uh, creating bonuses up front and then later on you can tweak it as needed. And that's my approach. It's a little more small marketer approach. When you get bigger and bigger, you can use the test approach. But this is how we come up with our ideas. So one of our ideas is overcoming objection. And maybe another objection is I don't have a very expensive computer or I don't have any computer programming software. Now, these objections are actually already covered in the main course. We show you how to use free software. You don't have to have a fancy computer to do it. You can't do it on an iPad. You have to do have to have a keyboard. It's way too slow on a pad, on a tablet. But other than that, you pretty much do it anywhere. Maybe another objection will be, I don't have an office. But I feel like the main objection, the first objection will be, it's too hard. Now, if we can't come up with other primary objections, the second type of bonus that's really, really effective is the assumption bonus. The assumption of success. For example, if you have a product in fitness that's teaching women how to lose weight, it's specifically target women, it's a women's weight loss product. It's all about how to be super skinny and how to be super skinny and beautiful or get ready for beach time in the summer. Your bonus could be the skinny girl's bikini shopping guide. Now, what this bonus says is, I know you're going to succeed and here's what you're going to have to deal with next. If you have a dating guide for men about how to date uh, younger, beautiful women, your bonus could be like how to deal with all of your jealous friends or how to deal with your friend's wives who say they're not allowed to be friends with you anymore. When people see that, that the bonus is all about success and assumes that they're going to be a massive success, they go, wow, this program must really work. If it didn't really work, why would the bonus be that? So these are the two types of bonuses we put together. And if you watch a lot of infomercials, you'll notice that they add in lots and lots of bonuses to give lots and lots and lots of value. And that's why they do that. That's what they're creating. They're either assuming success, providing complimentary items, which is okay, or overcoming objections. Oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. So it doesn't work for me. One of the other things that infomercials do that's something worth thinking about is they often give you two of everything. Why do they give you two? Because one of the objections is what if it breaks? What if I order this knife from TV? What if I order the sweet Ginsu knife that can cut through anything, including a car axle, and it breaks? Now, they say other things when they're offering it. They'll start talking about, oh, well, this is, this is a second knife and you can keep it in your second house or you can give it to your grandmother or your friend or it can be a gift. And that's, all that's doing is increasing the value of the second knife. They're telling you other things you can do with it, but initially it's solving that objection. And as you get to know your audience, 
you can learn a lot. Now, I sell a lot of products, especially when I have a new product. The first time I release it all, I usually sell it via webinar because they can ask people questions. Oh, you just, you just bought it. Why did you buy it? You didn't buy, please tell me why. If you're on a webinar with me and I'm selling something, and sometimes on webinars I sell something, sometimes I don't, I'll ask you, why did you choose to not buy it? Why did you choose to buy it? That information tells me how I can improve my offer and product. So if people say, oh, I bought it because of this, or I didn't buy it because of that. Oftentimes, the most common thing you'll hear is I didn't buy it because of price. That's fine. Nothing you can do about that. You can't change it unless you're gonna change the price. The only way you can, if people literally can't afford it, there's nothing you can do. And that's an objection I never try to do a hard push to cross. I know a lot of salesmen do. It's not, that doesn't interest me. If people can't afford it. I don't want people buying my stuff on credit cards. They can't afford it. It's not necessary. I want to help people grow. I'd rather help you make the money first with my free program and then you use that to buy a course. But maybe they'll say, oh, it seems cool, but it doesn't work on, mm -hmm. on Mac. A lot of people, when they release software, it's PC only and they lose 10 to 15% of the market. They certainly lose me because I'm Mac only. And that becomes an objection. They learn that and they start releasing software that's either web-based or it's built on a platform that's dual system, like Adobe Air. I like to release software on Adobe Air because it works on Mac and PC. It's a platform that works on either. So it's a really, really good way to build stuff for a small marketer. When you are creating the offer and the sales process, what you're trying to do is build as much value at this point. So you want to say, we solve your problem. Here's a bonus that overcomes the objection. Here's another bonus that assumes you'll succeed. And then here's a third bonus that's something else that really beefs up the value. In fact, we'll give you, instead of just one, two, think about what all this is worth. If you if were to buy all this stuff separately in a, in a grocery store or go to the department store, this would cost $987,000. And we say a really high number, the highest number we can kind of create. And we say, that's so high, but I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't charge you that much. So instead, I'm going to knock the price down. I said, I'm going to give you today, not for $100, not for $50, not for $25, but for $19.95. Now, infomercials always end up being $20. They always end up being under $20 uh, because that's an impulse buy number. There's a huge difference between $19.95 and $20.01. You'll sell 10 times more units at $19.95. So they always try to get the price down to there. And if they can get it below $10, that's even easier to sell. That's the next jump point. So knowing that, we build up this huge value and then lower it down to the real price. And you'll see, I do the same thing with my products. I'm not trying to hide anything here. With my products, when I'm explaining why I price things, I explain what the thing would cost. For example, in my networking course, which is one of my more expensive courses, if you just think about how powerful the technique is, and you'll see the value. So of course, what would it cost for me to do a one-on-one -on -one session with you teaching my networking stuff? What would it cost for me to go with you to a conference and spend a weekend with you holding your hand and teaching you how to network, teaching you all the stuff I'm teaching you? That's one way to look at the value. The other way is to look at, well, this technique will get you a raise and it will. You can use the technique in Networking Empire to get a promotion at work. You can immediately get a three or 5% raise. What's that worth to you? No matter what you're making, it's worth more than the cost of the course over the course of the next six months. It's a massive bump in income, no matter how you use it. What if you just make one contact or get one client? What if you get one project? Any of those things are value. So you look at in this space where you're helping people to build businesses, the amount of money they'll make from the product is another way to build up the value. And then again, you do the price job, but I'm not going to charge that much. And yeah, like a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, me spend a weekend with someone would be at least 10, probably 20, $25,000 to get me off my island in one-on-one -on -one to learn the exact same material. So there's a lot of value in the content and people have paid me a lot of money in the past for the same material. So there's a great deal of value there. And my value comes from my experience rather than just me pulling it out of the air. I go, this is what I've charged in other markets this is what competitors charge. There are other networking programs out there that they'll have a flunky who works for a networking company show up at your office and teach people networking and they charge about $1,000 a person or more. You can spend $20,000 to teach about 10 people how to network in your office, and the person teaching them is a drone working for another company. It's not an independent networker at all. So that's where your value can come from, looking at the competition. So you create your final price, you create your final offer, and now you have something you can sell. You can add in the other sales accoutrements later on, but these are the pieces, the parts, and parcel, and the structure of a really powerful offer that you can sell and make a great deal of money. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Serve No Master podcast. Join me on my Facebook page at facebook.com backslash serve no master.